We'll make a little noise if you love Jesus today. Come on. Everybody's standing for the reading of God's word. The Lord spoke to me at the end of last year. He said, make my presence and my word the priority of every service. He said, do that first. And I've, I've been being obedient to the Lord. And I'm telling you, God is moving. Look at this first Sunday crowd in an early service. You ought to give God praise. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm ready for a spectacular 2020. Okay, I got about 30% of you there. I said, I'm ready for a mind-blowing, devil-killing, victory-releasing, joy, bringing victory time in 2020. And I'm ready to do much, so much more than just talk about vision and talk about destiny. I'm ready to walk in all that God has for me. So I'm here to preach today. If you're ready, shout, I'm ready. See, see, I want to tell you something. I believe that we can talk about a lot of things and we can release vision, but if we don't have a strategy to get to where God is calling us to go, we'll never get there. So how many of you want strategy for vision this year? We're looking at Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 1. It says, I will stand my watch and set myself on the rampart and watch to see what he, what the Lord will say to me. How many of you are interested in finding out what the Lord wants to say to you about 2020? He said, I will answer when I am corrected. Then the Lord answered me and said, write the vision down and make it plain on the tablets that he may run who reads it. One translation said that the herald may run who reads it. Look at your neighbor and say, hello, herald. Come on. Yeah, yeah, you're the herald. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak, and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it, because it will what? Come on, are there some things in 2020 that will surely come into your life? It will not tarry. Proverbs 29, 18 says, Where there is no vision, the people cast off restraint, but happy is he who keeps the law. The Lord spoke to me that this is the year of manifested vision. In other words, we're not just going to talk about the vision, we're going to manifest the vision. In other words, there are going to be some things in your life that are going to supernaturally manifest, things that you've talked about and dreamed about. The abstract is going to make contact in 2020. Things you've talked about in the name of Jesus that I have dreamed of are going to become reality. Who's ready to manifest vision? Come on. So I'm going to talk to you today about manifesting vision and leaving a legacy. If you're here today, just slip up both hands and let's pray together. You by live stream, you honor us. This is your church. This is your time. Thank you for being with us. Father, release revelation and vision in the house that the name of Jesus be glorified. Thank you, Lord, that you're doing a new thing in 2020. We give you the glory and we praise you. Somebody give the Lord an ovation of praise. Come on, only praise him if you love him. Come on, only praise him if he's been good to you. All righty, you can be seated. I want you to put your thinking caps on. I want you to take out your pens and pencils. I want you to get out your smartphones. I want you to take some notes because I'm releasing a strategy. Because not only are we going to manifest vision, 2020, we're manifesting vision and we're leaving a legacy. How many of you want to leave something behind? Hallelujah. Now, now, today marks the beginning of sacred season. We start fasting and praying. We're doing a meats and sweets fast and some of you will fast a little differently, but we have decided that we are going to start this year off putting God first. How many of y'all want God to be first at the first of the year? Now, we've divided our, our year up into four seasons. The Lord instructed me and dealt with me at the end of last year. January through March is our season of dedication. April through June is our season of salvation. That's when we're going to see so many people come to the Lord through our Easter season. Who can believe with us for souls? July through September is our season of fire. How many of you still believe in the outpouring of the Holy Ghost? 
In fact, we're going to have that tonight because we've got revival tonight, starting with Bishop Kevin Wallace. Then we've got Pastor Donnie McClurkin, and then we've got Pastor Sammy Rodriguez. We're going to have three nights of fire. But then October through December is our season of hope. But the Lord spoke to me, and he said, I want you to make this first quarter, that being January through March, the season of dedication. See, the devil is not afraid of you until you get dedicated to a thing. He knows the moment you are dedicated, you are committed in prayer, you are committed in giving and worship into the house of the Lord, into the moment you are dedicated to fasting, the moment you are dedicated and serious about the things of God, you become dangerous. And I'm declaring that you're going to be dangerous in 2020, that as you are as you are dedicating yourself to God, that you're going to be dangerous in 2020. And we're starting the first 21 days off as we always do with prayer and fasting and giving. And I don't know about you, but I'm declaring that in 2020 in this church and in your life, in 2020, we don't just have vision, we manifest vision. We don't just have a vision for 2020, but we manifest a vision. There are some things that are going to come to pass. There are some things that are going to happen. The enemy has been trying to resist, but I say in the mighty name of Jesus that in your life, you're going to manifest breakthrough. You're going to manifest victory. You're going to manifest purpose. You're going to manifest power. You're going to manifest a new season. You're going to manifest a new business. The salvation of your children is going to manifest. The breakthrough in your home is going to manifest. I need somebody who's ready to manifest a little vision in 2020. Make some noise in the room. Now, the real reason to manifest vision is for this. We want to leave a legacy. And we certainly have vision in this room. I can feel it for our church, for our lives, for our families. And our vision must come to pass. Because a God-given vision enables you to leave a legacy. As I've gotten older, I'm not old, but I'm older. I've come to realize that legacy is what you leave behind for the next generation. I want to leave something behind. And the root word for generation is generate. So I'm asking you today, what are we generating for the next generation? I've made up in my mind I'm going to leave a legacy and I cannot do that without vision. I cannot leave a legacy without a manifested vision. I want you to understand the importance of manifesting a vision and leaving a legacy. Every one of us in this room, we were saved in buildings that we didn't pay for. We were saved in churches that we didn't buy. We sat in pews that we didn't finance and make a way for. But a generation before us left a legacy that we sat in. And I'm telling you that we are not going to drop the ball in this generation. Should Jesus tarry long after you and I are going to heaven, there's going to be a church here that is fire baptized, filled with the Holy Spirit. Sons and daughters will be coming to Christ. This church will be powerful and mighty because we're going to manifest vision and we're going to leave a legacy. Are there any legacy leavers in the room? Make a little noise if you want to leave a legacy. It will not perish with me. I believe Jesus can come back before any of this happens. But I'm telling you, if I wind up in heaven, I'm going to leave something behind. And I need a few thousand people that are a part of the Calvary family that wants to leave a legacy. Make a little noise in the room right now. Because in the end, what you will be remembered for is not what you have acquired, but what you release and leave behind. I want to generate something for the next generation. You and I represent the legacy of the manifested vision of those who have gone before us. Somebody invested so I could be here today and so you could be here today. So I want to talk to you about vision. Who wants a vision for 2020? Vision is your ability to see beyond where you are. And when that vision is from God, it's a supernatural vision. I don't want just natural vision. I want supernatural vision. I've heard it said in life, what you see is what you get. But write this down. What you don't see, you can hardly even get. In other words, you have to see it before you can seize it. You have to behold it before you hold it. You have to get a vision and see things that are not as though they were. 
And the Bible bears no finer example than from the life of a man named Abraham. The Bible said, and the Lord said to Abram, after Lot had separated from him, underline that if you find that in your Bible. After Lot had separated from him, lift up your eyes now and look from the place where you are, northward, southward, eastward, and westward, for all the land which you see, I will give to you and your descendants, you and your descendants, you and your descendants, not just you, but your daughter, not just you, but your son, not just you, but your children. I will give it to you and your descendants for how long? Forever. Now, Abraham receives this mighty promise from God, but it's locked up in a vision that has to be manifested. And I want to show you some things from here that are so powerful. The Lord said to Abraham, watch this, after he had separated from Lot, he said, lift up your eyes. He said, you've been looking around. He said, you've got to stop looking around and start looking up. He said, lift up your eyes. I'm talking to people who you've been transfixed in your situation. You've been hypnotized by your problem. You've been drawn in by your dilemma. And all you can do is look around. You look around and it doesn't seem possible. But the Lord said, here's what I want you to do, Abraham. I want you to look up. I've come to tell you that the first Sunday in 2020, stop looking around and start looking up. Start looking up and you'll find out that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly far above anything you can ask or even think. But watch this now. Don't miss this. The Bible said, and when he had separated himself from Lot. Now, now get this. He never got the fullness and totality of God's vision for his life until he separated himself from Lot. Now, that may not sound too deep or very profound until you define the name Lot. Lot's name means covering. His name means veil. And everybody in the room on some level has to deal with a lot in life. See, there are some people in your life that you must have a certain degree of separation from in 2020. Because if you don't, their negative presence will hide God's vision. There are some people that have been established in your life and they have been placed there by the enemy because the enemy knows as long as you stay connected to them, you won't be able to see in fullness the totality of the vision that God has for you. But I'm telling you in 2020, God is about to separate you from negative resources that have kept you down and he's about to plug you into a season where you're gonna stop looking around and you're gonna start looking up and you're gonna see victory manifest in your life. Are you ready? Hallelujah. Now, he never saw the fullness of the vision that God had for him until he was separated from Lot, the veil. Come on, somebody, the covering. Now, that doesn't mean you don't love the people that you've been connected to. Abraham obviously loved Lot because he actually rescued Lot in the very next chapter in Genesis 14 when Lot got in trouble. But nevertheless, Abraham never saw the fullness of God's vision until he separated from people who who had access to him that hindered his ability to see fully what God had for him in the future. Now, Now, everybody has some lots that they deal with. Lot can be a person, come on somebody. It can be a relationship. It can be an activity. I don't know about you, but I don't want to do anything that's going to stop me from seeing God's vision manifest in my life. It can be a behavior. It can be a mindset. And anything that covers or veils God's vision in your life, I break it this year. I break anything off of you. I break any influence. I break any activity. I break any behavior. I break any desire off of you that would stop you from walking fully in the manifested vision of God for your life. I release a supernatural season of clarity in the mighty name of Jesus. If you receive that, make a little noise in the room. Now here's what the Lord said, the land which, I, which you see, 
I will give to you and your descendants forever. God said, all I have for you is attached to your vision. You have to see it. Push your neighbor and say, you have to see it. Vision in this context can be defined as a picture of a preferred, prospered, blessed, and broken through future. Who wants a preferred, prospered, blessed, and breakthrough future? Okay, we're almost there. I got 60% of you. I said, who wants, in Jesus' name, in 2020, you want to manifest a preferred, prospered, blessed, and breakthrough 2020? Make a little noise if that is your agenda. When God gives you a vision, then you have to mind what you are running after, what you are going for. The person with vision has a deliberate destiny. In other words, you're not guessing this year. You're not, you're not groping this year. God is giving you a vision. Listen to what he said to Abraham. He said, the land which you see, I will give to you. Ask your neighbor, what do you see? What do you see? Some of you have been seeing defeat. Some of you have been seeing anxiety. Some of you have been seeing problems. But in the name of Jesus, I declare that you're going to see things differently. You say, Pastor, what do you see? I see success. I see increase. I see revival. I see souls. I see peace. I see power. I see joy. I see victory. I see growth on every campus. I see breakthrough in your house. I see power for your family. I see, come on, if you're ready to see it, give God a praise in the room right now. Well, so-and-so said, well, my sister-in-law said, well, well Joey Jojo Shabadoo said, come on, somebody. See, let me, let me declare this over you. There will be doubters and unbelievers in 2020, and there will be you, empowered by the Holy Spirit, proving them wrong. Can you look at somebody and just declare that? No, but only do it if you're believing for great things in 2020. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, there will be doubters and unbelievers in 2020. And there will be you, empowered by the Holy Spirit, proving them wrong. Oh, my God. Oh, hallelujah. There'll be people who say it can't be done, it can't be done, it can't be done, it can't be done. And there you will be stepping up with a vision from heaven, proving them wrong, not by might, nor by power, but by the Spirit of the Lord. You will manifest vision in this year. Now, now, 2020 in eyesight represents ideal vision. Come on. I don't have 2020 vision naturally, but I'm believing God for it. Come on, y'all. 2020 is ideal vision. Who wants ideal vision in 2020? So I declare in faith over you, over your family, that 2020 represents a year of clear vision as it relates to your future. You're not going to grope around. You're not going to wander around, but you're going to have clarity. God gives you vision and, it wor and he works with you based on your commitment to fulfill it. All great achievers in family, life, ministry, industry, business were people of vision. They didn't just have vision, they manifested vision. So I'm gonna give you four ways very quickly to manifest vision. If you're ready, somebody say, I'm ready. I'm ready. Number one, vision requires declaration. Habakkuk 2.1 and 2 says this, I will stand my watch and set me upon the tower and I will watch to see what he will say to me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me. In order for us to walk where God has called and commissioned and ordained us to walk, we must be a people who understand that it is God's declaration that we see. Check out what Habakkuk said. He said two words at the inception of chapter two. He said, I will, I will. Somebody say this, say if I will, Come on, say, if I will, God will. 
Don't miss this. In 2020, everything is starting with I will. Unless and until you get an I will in your spirit and in your life, I will. I will walk in power. I will overcome the attacks of the enemy. I will fast. I will pray in sacred season. I will sow my first fruit seed. I will break through this year. I will press forward. I will see miracle signs and wonders. I will see power. Power. I will see revival in this generation. I will see my daughter delivered. I will see my son saved. I will see joy over sorrow. I will see victory over defeat. I will, I will, I will. Is there anybody who's got an I will in your spirit as it relates to the next season? Somebody shout, I will. He said, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch and see what he will say, what the Lord will say. Now this is powerful because when he said, I'm gonna stand upon my watch, he'd set myself in a tower. He said, I wanna get to a place without distraction. I wanna get to a place where I can focus. I, I, wanna, I want all the distracting voices silenced and I wanna hear what the Lord says about my future. See, vision requires time with God, without distraction. This is why we're fasting the first of the year. We're praying. We're putting God first in our giving on Sacred Sunday because we are committed to focusing on God's plan in 2020. He said, I will see, look at verse 1, what he will say. I will see what he will say. He said, I will stand my watch and I will see what he will say. You see, it really doesn't matter what anybody else says. When you've heard from God, this man didn't say, I want to see what my parents say. I want to see what my brother said. No, he said, I want to see what God says. And when you've heard what God says, it doesn't matter what your mother-in-law says. It doesn't matter what your friends say. It doesn't matter what YouTube says. It doesn't matter what the media says. It doesn't matter what people around you say. They'll say you can't, but God says you can. They say you won't, but God says you will. They say no, but God says yes. They say break down, but God says breakthrough. They say death, but God says life. They say defeat, but God says victory. They say depression, but God said joy. I'm telling you, I will stand my watch and hear what God says. Some of you have been taking advice from backseat drivers. Come on now. You've been taking advice from people who don't even know how to get where you're going. You've been letting a woman who ain't even got a man give you advice on how to get you a man. Come on, somebody. You've been taking business advice from somebody who's declared bankruptcy seven times. But I'm telling you, this is the year where you don't look for bad advice. But this year you say, Lord, what are you saying? Let me hear what you're saying. Let me walk in the supernatural. He said, I will see what God says. That, that got deep down in my spirit. I want to see what God says. Number one, see means that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pay attention. But number two, he said, I'm going to see it. If God says it, I'm going to see it. And in 2020, you must remove distractions and see what God says so you can see what God says. I want to see what God says. What are you saying, God? Let me see. Let me see what you're saying. I want to see what you're saying so I can see what you're saying. I want to hear what you're saying so I can see what you're saying. He said, I'm going to see what God said. What has God said about you? Has God said your children are going to be saved in 2020? Has God said you're going to have a financial breakthrough in 2020? Has God said that you're going to, has God said you're going to have a job open up for you in 2020? Has God said the book is coming out in 2020? The opportunity is coming in 2020. The sun will get delivered in 2020. Come on, somebody. Has God said it? How many of you want to see what God said? Look at your neighbor and say, hey, neighbor, you sit there. But I got to take 10 seconds and give God praise because in 2020, I'm going to see what God said. I'm going to see what God said about my life. I'm going to see what God said about my church. I'm going to see what God said about my family. Oh. Now, here's, here's what I love. Habakkuk 2, 2 said, and the Lord answered me. And the word answered there, it's powerful in the Hebrew. It means to eyeball. It means the Lord looked right at me. He spoke, he sang, he shout, and he testified. He spoke, he sang, he shouted, and he testified. Can I declare? 
that in 2020, the God of angel armies is going to answer you. He's going to look on you. He's going to eyeball you. He's going to speak. He's going to sing. He's going to shout. And he's going to testify over your life. I don't know what that does for you, but I need to tell a young man in this room that in this next season, God is going to speak, he's going to sing, he's going to shout, and he's going to testify over your life. Lady, I'm telling you, God is going to sing, he's going to speak, he's going to shout, and he's going to testify over your life. Your life is going to be God's testimony of his own faithfulness and goodness. So victory, uh, vision requires declaration. Number two, vision requires design. Write the vision down and make it plain. Somebody say, make it plain. Now listen, in order for you to walk in your God-ordained, spirit-supplied, vision-driven destiny, you must understand that your destiny requires design. You're not just going to look up into it. The Bible said, make it plain. Somebody say, make it plain. That means to leave no doubt. That means to make it clear, distinct, and easy to understand. If you go in my office, in my office there is a vision board. I have written down everything that I'm believing God for in 2020 because I'm serious about it. And I remind myself about it. You need to sit down today if you haven't done it and write things down you feel like the Lord has spoken to you about as it relates to vision. Here's what you need to do. Leave no doubt. I'm telling you my vision is going to come to pass. I'm going to take everything I can from the devil. I'm going to build churches in the mighty name of Jesus. These churches will be full gospel. They will be blood washed. They will be multicultural. They will be God loving. They will be living holy. They will be debt free. They will be ministering to the masses. They will be full of power. I'm going to do that in my ministry. My children are going to serve God with great joy and peace. My marriage is going to be, I got a vision y'all. I'm right another book. I'm releasing more influence. How many of you got some things in the mighty name of Jesus that you're going to do? Give God a praise if that's you. Vision requires this reality. It requires design. So write it down. I, when you, I want you to take some time. I know it sounds like homework, but I want you to write some things down. How many of y'all know how to write? Well, look what the Lord has done. Write it down, tap it into your phone, and take some time and leave no doubt. Take some time, seek the Lord. I'll tell you what I've learned to do. I've learned to write vision when I'm close to God. And during this time of prayer and fasting, write down the vision. Number three, vision requires deployment. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon the, table, the tables that he may run who reads it. One translation said that the herald may run that reads it. Look at your neighbor and say, your name is Harold. Come on, Harold. That means you got to run with it, Harold. Come on, everybody on your row is named Harold. I thought her name was Kathy. No, she's Harold today. See, see, here's the deal. Here's what a Harold does. A Harold runs, and then a Harold speaks. So I, I want you to go about it and be about it, but I want you to talk about it. Tell somebody victory begins in my mouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you can't handle me talking about breakthrough, then you don't want to hang out with me because victory begins in my mouth. Can I speak this over you in the name of Jesus in faith? Your lips have been anointed with grace. Y'all, I got to hurry. I am declaring that in 2020, your lips have been anointed with grace. What is grace? Grace is unmerited favor. You're going to manifest things that you don't even deserve. Your lips have been anointed with grace. Now, the Hebrew language, we're going to talk a little bit about 5780. We're in the year pay, 80, new decade. Bring it up. We're in the year 5780, pay. Bring up the picture, if you will, please. Now, now this is a year of victory that comes through declaration. Grace is going to help you discern what conversations would jeopardize your victory in 2020. Come on now, write that down. Grace is going to help you discern what conversations would jeopardize your victory in 2020.
Don't miss this. I don't want to move so quickly that you miss this. Your mouth is your prophetic piece. The Bible said you will decree a thing and it will be established. Life and death are in the tongue. So grace is about to anoint your lips. And you are going to speak grace and victory. Conversations breed association and association determines assimilation. That means you're going to avoid wrong conversations. That means you're not going to get hooked up with people who don't believe in and who don't think that your family can be born again. You're going to connect with people who believe that God can do everything that he said that he would do. This year you don't get swallowed up in the negativity of others. But this year you walk in the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus and you start this victory process when you get the victory in your mouth. Now, watch this. I want you to show the picture of the cursive pay and I want you to, can you show the picture of the, of the Hebrew letters? Come on, where are they at? Do we have them? Look what the Lord has done. All right. This, we're in the year pay. Remember, uh, Hebrew letters, I've taught this for years. They're hieroglyphic. They look like something. And this is actually, it represents a few things. Number one, this represents the profile of a man. You see his nose here. This is his mouth. So it represents, Hebrew scholars tell us, that 2080, the, the decade of the 80s, represent the decade of declaration. So that means this year you're going to begin to declare things. This year you're going to begin to speak things. This year you're going to declare power. You're going to declare victory. You're going to get the negativity out of your mouth and you're going to get victory in your mouth. How many of you are ready to declare my children will be born again? My finances will be blessed. I will break through. I will see revival. Come on, if you're ready to get your mouth full of victory, give God a praise right now. 2020 is a year of manifested vision, and this year you will hold what you have seen. And the Bible says, now I want you to understand this. I want you to get this in, in your spirit. I, I moved a little bit too quickly, but I want, you to, I want you to place the regular and the cursive side by side. Can you bring the next picture up? Now, here is, here is the word, the, the, the pay written in, in just regular writing, but here it is in cursive. And in cursive, they tell us that it represents a few things. Number one, it represents the body of a man. It represents the container of a man. Secondly, it represents a home or a house. But there is a, something in the middle. That little dot is called a yod. Somebody say yod. Y-O-D. And yod is the spark and the fire of God. So here's what's going to happen this year. This year, you're going to speak with the spark of God. You're going to speak with the fire of God. You're going to decree and declare with the fire of God. This year, when you speak, you're going to spark victory. The Bible said in Jeremiah 5, 14, Behold, I am making my words in your mouth like a fire. This year, you're going to get a fire in your soul, and you're going to get a fire in your mouth. Hallelujah. This year when you speak, you're going to spark victory because the Holy Ghost is going to guide you. You're going to spark victory in your family, victory in your business, victory in your church, victory with your children. Yeah. The Bible said your father who sees you in secret will reward you openly. I decree and declare this is the year private promises and proclamation become public promotions. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, get the spirit inside of you. Say this year, private promises and proclamations become public promotions. Somebody give God a praise. Okay, you're getting the spark inside of you. Bring that picture back up again. Come on, bring my other picture back up again, the first, the second one. Bring the second one up with a little dot in the middle. Can we bring that up in the back? This represents the spark of God. This represents the fire of God within a man. It represents the fire of God within the body, the soul of a man. And I'm declaring the enemy has tried to keep things locked up in private. He's tried to keep you locked up from stepping out in faith, from seeing victory but this year the enemy is losing his ability to contain your fire 
Limitations are burning off of you this year. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, this year, limitations are burning off of you. Hallelujah. I said this year limitations are burning off of you. This year limitations are burning off of you. Hear me, Troy McCoy. This year limitations are burning off of Calvary Christian Center. This year limitations are burning off of your family. There's a fire inside of you. And in the name of Jesus, this year limitations are burning off. If you want the limitations to burn off of your life, give God a praise. Twenty twenty is a year of manifested vision. This year you're gonna hold what you have seen. Ha. Huh? He said, he said, write the vision down that the herald may run. Run means to move quickly. It means to hurry to, for whatever reason. You're gonna be this is a year of deployment to systematically and strategically distribute persons or forces. Now, number four, victory requires determination. How many of you got a made up mind? Habakkuk two three, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. But in the end, it will speak and will not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. Somebody raise your hands and say, it will surely come. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've got a fire inside of me that says it will surely come. I've got a fire in my soul that says it will surely come. I've got a, I got a word from heaven and it will surely come and it will not tarry. Now, now, now for you to walk in God's vision for your life, for your divine destiny to be displayed, it's gonna require determination. I got a made up mind. It will manifest. I am not quitting. I am not giving up. The devil thought I would throw in the towel. The devil is sadly mistaken. The devil thought I would quit. The devil is sadly mistaken. The devil thought I would, I would wave the white flag. The devil is sadly mistaken. I got something inside of me that said everything God promised me is going to come to pass. Limitations are burning off of my life. I speak prophetically in the name of Jesus that this year limitations are coming off of your life. I speak that you are determined. You do not quit. You do not vacillate. You do not, you do not lay down, but you rise up. And in 2020, everything that God has promised you shall come to pass. In 2020, you rise. In 2020, you walk with power. In 2020, you see breakthrough. Glory to God. Now the Bible said, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but in the end it shall speak and shall not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. Tarry in the Hebrew, it means reluctant to manifest, slow to come, delayed in appearance. Some of you feel like that vision has been delayed, but just because it's been delayed does not mean that it's been denied. There are times when it seems like it's not going to come or it's slow or it's reluctant to appear, but I have three words in my spirit for you. Don't sweat it. If God promised you just wait, wait means to long for in the Hebrew, to await for its revival. It means to adhere, to, 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 to wait for its arrival. When you adhere to something, you're stuck to it, and it's stuck to you. In other words, people will look at you and say, why are you praising God? You don't even see what you've been believing for. Why are you praising God? It's because you have been stuck to a vision, and I, God brought me here, y'all, and I'm here to vouch for your vision. I'm here to vouch for your vision. Jim Rayleigh, your pastor, is standing on this stage today and telling you you may have been lonely. You may have been tired. You may have been wounded. In 2019, you may have been struggling, but don't give up. Your destiny is about to be placed on display. The vision is yet for an appointed time. An appointed time is the set time. It's the right time. Somebody throw up your hands and say, I have a an appointment say I have an appointment say I have an appointment it is yet for an appointed time say I have an appointment with destiny say I will leave a legacy 2020 is my year of manifested vision if that's you give God a praise We're not just going to have vision. 
We're going to manifest vision. I'm talking to somebody who has an appointment with power. You have an appointment with a breakthrough. You have an appointment with a new house. You have an appointment with family salvation. You have an appointment with healing. Tell your neighbor, don't miss your appointment. Manifesting vision and leaving a legacy will require declaration. It will require design. It will require deployment. And it will require determination. I have made up in my mind that I am going to manifest vision in 2020. I'm going to manifest vision and I'm going to leave a legacy. A legacy is something that outlives me. It is something that I don't consume on myself, but I think generationally and I generate for the next generation. Your vision will require declaration. That means you got to talk about it. You got to hear from the Lord. I will see what he says so I can see what he says. It will require design. Write it down. Here's your homework. Write down the vision. Write down some things you're believing for. It will require deployment. That means you're going to have to do some things. But see, your motivation is the spark, the fire that's inside of you. And finally, number four, vision will require determination. He said to Abraham, he said, I will give you all that you see, all the vision that you manifest. I'm going to give it to you and to your decision and to your descendants. That right there is manifesting vision and leaving a legacy. This year, we're rebuilding our kids' center. It's costing $1.2 million. You say, well, pastor, how in the world? Why in the world? Because we're going to leave a legacy. We're going to manifest vision. We've already had set aside a half a million dollars that we, of the 1.2, right around a half million. And it's going to be between a million two and a million three. I believe that this year, we're going to raise $750,000. And who believes that we can do that debt free? The Lord spoke to me. He said, the money's already there. I said, hallelujah. He said, the people just haven't given it yet. So here's what I want you to do. We're going to be fasting for 21 days. We're going to be praying. I want you to pray about what the Lord would have you to do. Because we're going to manifest the vision. We're going to create that kid's center. I leave here this morning and I go, today I'm preaching live. I won't be doing it every Sunday, but today I'm preaching live in Palm Coast because we went to an early morning service in Palm Coast. Give God a shout. We're moving, 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 moving. But you need to pray these 21 days and fast. We're going to come together on January 26th. We're going to present ourselves. We're going to present our lives. We're going to present our sacred season seed to the Lord. We're going to be fasting, and Pastor Dawn is going to talk about that, and praying and giving. I declare in Jesus' name that this year, this year, you don't just manifest vision. You leave a legacy. Those of us who give, Dawn and I, every year give our sacred season seed. It's never just our tithe. We always commit and give way above our tithes because this is the offering that we give to the Lord and say, Lord, this is our first fruits. How many of you believe that we can build that kid's center and improve our youth center and do it all debt free? Make a little noise if you believe it with pastor today. With heads bowed and eyes closed, if you're in this room and you say, Pastor, I'm not where I need to be with God. And when you pray for somebody, pray for me. There's things in my life that ought not be there. And this new year, I want to start it off right. I want to give my heart to Jesus. If you're not where you need to be with the Lord, and what a great early service crowd. 
If you're here and you'd say, Pastor, there's things in my life that ought not be there. When you pray for somebody, pray for me. When I count to three, raise your hands. Are you ready? Pastor, I want to start the new year off and I want to give everything to God. There's sin in my life. Pray for me, Pastor Rayleigh. If that's you, when I count to three, raise your hand. One, remember me, Pastor. Two, pray for me, Pastor. Three, slip that hand right up. Hands in every section. Pastor Dawn, I want you to come. I want everybody to take your hand and place it on your heart. Baby, I want you to pray vision over people. But I want you to pray this powerful sinner's prayer with folks right now. Everybody put your hand on your heart and raise your other hand. Bow your heads and close your eyes and let's commit ourselves to the Lord afresh for 2020. Listen, I want you to be here tonight for this revival. It's going to be supernatural. It's going to be powerful. You don't want to miss it. These three nights are going to be critical. Hand on your heart. Raise your other hand. Pray after me. Amen. Why don't we all pray this as we start in the season of dedication. Say, Heavenly Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. I dedicate all that I am. I surrender my heart. I surrender my soul. I surrender my mind, my future, my hopes, and my dreams. I surrender it to you. I invite you to be the Lord of my life and the Savior of my soul. Thank you that today, on this first Sunday of 2020, I have been made a brand new creature in Christ. In Jesus' name, all things are passed away. All things are made new for me in Jesus. Amen.